So the winds have abated, so I'm back down the plot and I'm looking forward to doing a bit of planting. But I'm also going to water in these nematodes and I'm just using these nema slug. Um, it's just on the borderline really of warm enough for them now. They can stand the odd frost, but they do really like soil temperatures above about six degrees. And I think it's about that. I haven't actually measured it, but I think it's about that. Certainly in the polytunnels and the low tunnels and things like that, it should be fine. And I'm watering them in with this. I just drilled a whole load of holes in it. And quite how does that make a lot of difference? The whole process becomes so much easier when the nozzles don't all keep blocking up. So that's the main job really just a bit of watering and the low tunnels really like it i like to water at this time of year only when it's breezy and sunny so that all the leaves are fully dried before i kind of close up the tunnels and the, and the coal frames now i'm not fully closing anything up at now because there's no frosts um, so i'm leaving them sort of vented like this all through the night uh, which makes life a lot easier for me and what am i planting well i'm planting spring onions and possibly no just spring onions and beetroot i think and a little bit of spinach so not very much just filling in the odd gaps and doing a bit of interplanting now when you're applying your nematodes you just water them in like this you do need the ground to be fairly well saturated and then you can go over it again just with ordinary water don't neglect the edges because slugs do like to live in the edges of raised beds but it's no big deal i mean they'll just find somewhere else to go if you don't have raised beds um, we used to have uh, ordinary beds with no uh, wooden sides at one time and we just used to get exactly the same problems with slugs that we get now that we've got the raised beds so i will do two applications of these nematodes a month apart in the spring and I won't do anything in winter sorry in summer and then I'll do another one another application in September and I find that's enough so I'm planting out these spring onions and these mainly are white Lisbon and I'm just popping them into planting them basically into this bed I do like interplanting onions into salad beds and I particularly like this sort because these are a hearting lettuce so I think these are a maize um, moon red is a very similar version to these they're kind of a bit like a red little gem and because I won't be harvesting them every week the onions don't get in the way so they're just planted in these little depressions i did the holes and they're going to be great they're in a little cold frame so i think that's some early protection so there we go i'm really happy with those i'm just going to give them a quick water in onions are pretty tough they don't mind frost um, these onions have been given a little bit of a trim because they were a little bit leggy because they were planted at the beginning of january and um, yeah that's a little bit early for onions i just had to do that because i don't have enough space to start everything in february so um yeah what can you say about spring onions other than that we switch over from white spring onions to red ones um about now really in terms of sowing because they're just sweeter so all my main crop onions now they've all had a bit of a trim just to take the leggiest tips off them and they're all looking great on it they've all put on loads of growth since the trim very pleased with them all so I've just brought some seedlings from home I'm just going to make some space for them I've got some nice little uh, Oregon sugar pod uh, peas there these are my main crop multi sown leeks my summer leeks are doing pretty well now they're, they're much bigger than these and um, my next succession of turnips and radish i'm just about to plant these beetroot and just a few stragglers of spinach i've actually got some more spinach over here 
I really can't know where to plant them though, so I'm just gonna have to try and squeeze them in somewhere. I haven't actually got any space left on my plot now, so everything has to be interplanted. So these are little Tuscan kales, all sorts of different varieties. These are interplanted with radish, put those in last week, seven days ago, and they've really come on. I'm very pleased with those. And this bed's another bed of Tuscan kales, and this one is going to have these beetroot in it. So those beetroot were a little bit leggy, and so I just planted them nice and deep. I'll just show you that one like that, and I just squeeze the soil around them and they'll soon pick up and they'll look great. Now I've never actually interplanted beetroot into a brassica bed before. I'm kind of hoping it's going to look a little bit like that one there. Although the brassicas will be a bit bigger. But that's a similar bed, planted same sort of density. And that one was with turnips. And these are almost identical beetroot that I planted out about a week ago and you can see now that they're just looking really lovely picked up perfectly and I've got some cauliflowers down there looking quite nice so now I'm into planting these semaine so these are a salad onion but they're not like white Lisbon or North Holland blood red or anything like that they're kind of a well, I'll put a picture up anyway, makes it easy to try to explain it. Um, but these come ready about the time, same time as the main crop onion, so sort of July, August time. And hopefully I'll have gradually started clearing this beetroot bed by then. And so the onions will be all that's left. And so they'll have loads of space through sort of July uh, and into August. Um, I don't know. I mean, the de these onions definitely they won't interrupt or interfere with the beetroot. Um, at least I don't think they will. And I might get an onion crop. And as I said, they're not for storage. Uh, they don't have to grow big because they're just going to be chopped up in salads. So I think they're going to be great. And we do struggle really to grow really good quality uh, salad onions in midsummer. They're great in spring. They're great in autumn, they're great over winter, but um, yeah, summer's a bit of a struggle. So we're trying these semaine just to see uh, whether they kind of fill that gap. So I just cleared a few carrots and that let me just plant those last few little uh, spinach. These are red kitten, one of our favorite spinaches at this time of year. And I have got some underneath this little uh, cloche as well that I planted a couple of weeks ago and they're doing quite nice these I'm just going to pop under a little bit of fleece so there's some red kitten that I harvested yesterday absolutely just look at it it's such a gorgeous spinach I think and the final job on my plot is just to put in these few spare field beans Debbie's uh, filled all the gaps in the main field bean bed on her plot and the rest of that bed is just waiting for some spinach which will be under planted underneath here so I've just put this little fleece tent over those broad beans now broad beans will survive quite happily without any protection at all really um, but they will benefit from it in terms of accelerated growth and that's what I really need here because this bed is my main storage beetroot bed and they get planted at the end of June and so I really want to get all of these broad beans harvested as quickly as possible and this little bit of fleece will really help with that I think. So that's me done for the day. I've got a little ebook chapter on how I deal with slugs and other pests you can check that out down below. There's nothing very impressive about it. I take a really simple approach to slug management, but it works well enough for me. And if you want to know anything more about any of the veggies that I planted today, then again, look down in the description there and you'll see a link to my database and the everything I've planted so far view of that database.
My name's Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel, and I'll see you soon.